okay so another component another primary components like a cp is a one of the primary component second primary component is uh, your primary memories so in a memory is two types one is primary memory second one is secondary memory primary memories are ram and rom ram is a main memory ram is a main memory okay ram is a main memory okay so what is this ram and rom first of all we'll see then we'll see ram and what, what is the rom also ram random access memory ram random access memory rom read only memory rom read only memory ram volatile memory ram volatile memory so what is volatile memory what is volatile memory so your system is running and you suddenly power off or maybe you shut down the system data in the ram will be deleted automatically so you cannot get the data so what are the data in the ram it's a temporary memory it is automatically deleted so that's we call it as that's why we call it as a ram as a volatile memory so again what is the volatile memory when power is goes off data will be lost data will be removed rom read only memory it is a non volatile memory so ram is volatile rom is non volatile memory what is a non volatile memory even you power off your system still data in the rom will be like that only so it it cannot be deleted it still it will be there okay so why it is like that so that is also we'll see okay so ram is a um, ram is look like this one so it is can you see ram the pictures or maybe i'll put a, some ram pictures here I will show you that the DDR4 RAM okay. images. So any RAM like DDR4 or DDR3. So the RAMs are look like this thing. Okay. So this is a RAM is a individual component which we are connecting to the motherboard. So you can see RAM on motherboard. how it is connected see it is so this is the ram slots on motherboard we are connecting to the ram exactly say we are not connecting on ram slots we are inserting rams okay like a one ram two ram three ram depends upon the requirement okay so we are inserting rams to the motherboard okay like this it's a separate component like your cpu cpu is a separate component right we can insert a cpu uh, on your motherboard same way ram is also we are inserting the cpu okay ram available in a different sizes and different models different sizes different models okay so here it is we can add a ram we can remove the ram or we can replace the ram for example my pc having a 4 gb ram i add a additional 8 gb ram in another sl slot two slots are there one slot already 4 gb is there in another slot i put a 8 gb ram so i add a ram for example i, I the ram is uh, i do not required like i want to replace the ram so i removed a 4 gb ram and put a 8 gb ram so i replace the ram RAM is damaged or maybe you, I, I need some RAM, I will remove it, no problem. So we can add, remove and replace the RAM from the RAM slots. Okay, so in computer, in computers means desktops, laptops, you can change it. But in mobile phones, it's onboard RAMs. We cannot uh, replace the RAM on mobile phone or tablets, you cannot change it. Next one is ROM. ROM is a chip. ROM is directly cheap. In a ROM, we, we, we are not uh, having a dead board. So, you can see 
your BIOS chipsets. So somewhere it is. ROM is nothing but a, a BIOS chip. OK, it is the it's written a BIOS. OK, ROM is also called as a BIOS chip. OK, these chips are fixed chips. Mostly it is a fixed chip. Some we can able to change it, but not like your ROM chip. See, this is the ROM chip means your BIOS chip. We can remove it and uh, we can put it another one, but not like your RAM, just like a you you see the ram and compatible ram inside the ram not like that it is has so many other uh, reasons are there to not to change the your rom chip like a ram so mostly it is a fixed chip on motherboard okay mostly it is it's a fixed chip on motherboard okay and even though you can able to remove that is only for a certain troubleshooting only in a chip level troubleshooting only you can able to change the ROM chip. But mostly it is a onboard. It is a fixed chip on your motherboard. It is a fixed chip on motherboard. Okay. So these are the differences between RAM and ROM. But first of all, we'll see the what is RAM. RAM is a main memory. In a primary memories, the main memory, RAM is also called as main memory, not uh, it is a main, it is not main kind of stuff. Okay. So in a primary memory is RAM and ROM. OK, in a RAM is also called as a main memory. OK, so it is a primary storage of CPU. Of course, uh, temporarily stored data. It is a volatile memory. RAM, two type of RAMs are there. One is static RAM. Another one is dynamic RAM. Static RAM is also called as SRAM. It is made up of pure form of transistors so pure form of bios uh, like a cmos transistors it's made up of uh, transistors okay it is cost because of pure form of transistors and uh, it is used as a cache memory we don't use srams we use srams for a cache memory which is built inside of your cpu only okay so in a cpu we have seen the cache memory right so this cache memory is it's a L1, L2, L3 cache memories. So those are nothing but a SRAM only, which is built inside your CPU. OK, so why it is because of SRAMs are very faster like a CPU speed. It's almost it's near to the CPU speed type only so that so we are not using for a RAM and it is costly and as well as a faster is equivalent to the CPU. So then they use it is a built inside of RAM. dynamic RAMs is uh, because they build with uh, transistors, resistors, capacitor kind of stuff. So the DRAMs, the dynamic RAM also called as DRAM, which is built based on transistors, capacitors and all. So it come down the cost will be uh, lesser, but it little slower than a CPU speed. It little, little slower than a CPU speed. No auto refreshment, so there is a, a refreshment circuit will be there separately. Okay. DRAMs, DRAMs, dynamic RAMs are uh, multiple di different type of DRAMs are there. Example, SD RAM, synchronous dynamic RAM, ECC RAM, EDO RAM, VRAM. VRAM means not virtual RAM, it is video RAM. We have a graphic cards, right? So the graphic card RAM we call it is a video RAM. Not exactly, but but not, but there we use a word called video RAM for a video memory purpose. OK. But graphic card, graphic card is a kind of computer type only. Means graphic card has its own processor. Graphic card has having a processor, RAM and uh, some IO kind of stuff also there. OK, but what is the graphic card you purpose is to handle the all the multimedia related means the mm, screen resolution screen uh, means media means video accelerations uh, audio accelerations okay um, graphical game like you playing a game so then um, the gaming related processing a uh, display 
okay faster uh, uh, is required right like nowadays we are getting gaming mobiles okay what is the difference playing a, the game in the normal regular uh, uh, smartphones and uh, playing in a rt uh, means uh, gaming mobile phones is a faster uh, the frame rate is higher okay so we can see the things clear controlling clearly no lagging inside why because of their graphical related processing okay that gaming related processing done by separate processor okay separation okay sometimes integrated sometimes not integrated yeah we are not going that one so we'll we'll discuss that again okay so dynamic ram is uh, further developed into synchronous dynamic ram the synchronous dynamic ram further developed into ddr sd ram ddr sd ram so ddr means double data rate this double data rate again further develop into ddr2 ddr3 ddr4 all are sd rams only but in that one sd ram ddr sd ram become a ddr ddr1 ddr ddr ddr2 ddr3 ddr4 and ddr5 the recent uh, this year only ddr5 is came into market which supports mainly for a uh, intel uh, 12th generation processors you, if you purchase certain models in the 12th generation you may have seen the ddr5 also in that one okay guys so these are the basically the ram types ram specifications like your cpu specification ram you are purchasing or you have a ram first of all ram mainly we mind about a size of the ram so which how much ram it is mbs gbs tbs of a ram 8 gb ram 10 gb ram or maybe 16 gb ram or a 32 gb ram 64 gb ram 128 gb ram like that we'll see the ram in the size manner first next speed of the ram is there so every ram has certain clock speed so which should be matches with your uh, cpu like that it is there like it depends upon whether ddr2 ddr3 ddr4 ddr5 and in that one also different frequencies are there okay 16 gb uh, like a 13 33 megahertz 800 megahertz 1600 megahertz 2100 megahertz 2400 megahertz 3200 megahertz 4800 megahertz 5100 uh, megahertz like that so 2666 or a 2366 megahertz speed of ram is there. and ram has a voltage levels low voltage high voltage levels also there as when you want to add ram means you want to add, add a additional ram or you want to put a new ram you want to purchase a new ram okay or, or you want to replace the ram you have to check the few things one is cpu compatibilities what is your cpu what is the matching ram okay you, you purchase a, a ddr um, sorry you are having a cpu intel cpu 10th generation ddr4 12th generation now it is ddr5 right so earlier we have a ddr3 this laptop ddr3 ram okay and their speed their voltage levels compulsory and every processor having a maximum capacity also for example uh, i just shown a 12th generation uh, um, 12th generation i5 processor what is the maximum ram support it is 64 gb and ram types these are all types will be supported ddr5 4800 or ddr4 3200 or DDR5, LP DDR5, it's 5200. Okay, or a 4267, uh, some model is there. So I don't know what is that model. X model, something it is showing. But this is uh, how much CPU can uh, supporting is maximum 64 GB RAM you can support. Two channels only. This CPU only support two channels, means maximum two RAMs, means 32, 32. That is maximum or 164 one single 64 or a maximum 32 32 or single 32 or 16 16 8 8 or 8 
like that either one or a two but you should not cross either one or two you should not cross more than 64. next one is motherboard compatibilities next one is motherboard compatibility so you have a processor you have a ram but where you put it on motherboard only the ram slot compatibility is required so when you see i have seen i removed that one right when you see a ram ram slots are there ram slots are dedicated for a certain ram models only like ddr3 supporting ram slot support ddr3 only because the pin numbers each ram has a different pin numbers okay so each ram having a different pin numbers you can see ddr3 240 pins a ddr4 having a, uh, maybe 248 pins uh, 400 pins like the different rams having a different pins mm. i want to go to rams mm. not this one i removed it so this is a hard disk internal components but uh, yeah we find some ram okay right. so yes, this is what is this black part it is a heat sink to cool the ram okay so this is a 16 gb ram lpx posair vagrants uh, this is some ram value 32 okay 3600 megahertz processor ram so ram model number okay so cost is like this so what is this 16 gb ram cost reduced very good because so ddr5 came now ddr4 cost is reduced i think so but it will increase again see this is processor like this you know get to know about uh, devices is very easy is amazon or a uh, 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 kind of stuff only okay you may get uh, sometimes information about their pin configuration voltage configurations also No, computer memory. See different RAMs. So this is a laptop RAMs, 8 GB DDR4 1.2 volts, sodium packages. Laptop RAMs are look like this one. Short, it is look like a smaller. Okay. Of course, each RAM having this pin configuration. Okay, number of pins configuration and notch differences will be there. See, you know the, the slit is there, a small notch so that also will be different from other rams so ddr4 to ddr5 notch difference pin difference is also there but i'm not getting any pin information here you can try separately from their own website like you can go to crucial website for this model you can find how many pins are there or ddr4 pins you can search it you can find it so this is a laptop rams these are the desktop rams this bigger means larger okay see this number of pins different notch ddr5 same if you take ddr3 the notch difference pin difference frequency differences will be there so on motherboard on motherboard ram slots compatibility is also required ram slot compatibility required voltages 1.2 1.5 3 volts ramps are there if for example you know when i have a ram 4 gb ram only so what i have done i take my laptop to the shop computer shop i showed my ram i ask i want 8 gb ram so why i showed my old ram because old ram model it will tell you the better details right working old ram will tell you better details right so what is it what type of ram it is what is the frequency in it okay what model what frequency what voltage level okay and your processor maximum capacity compatibilities you can easily known from your your laptop means your processor and as well as a <coughs> your old ram okay so you can directly take a old ram matching uh, ram directly okay so mine is a DDR3, 1600 megahertz. 
okay it's low level there is a symbol shows l l means low okay automatically the guy will give us uh, uh, the matching ram sometimes you can maintain same company samsung 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 also having uh, rams also there okay samsung kingston a data just i showed wagnans okay cosair uh, wagnans okay that kind of stuff okay frequency must matches matches with better old ram same old ram type okay if your ram is damaged so take the ram and see there is a code on it or a details on it so you have to purchase the similar ram so no worries in it okay no need to do a lot of research there simply see the ram okay so these are the ram related basic related kind of stuff means ram specifics and to upgrade and replace the rams also this is ram different packages are there dip packages sim package dim package rim package sodium packages the sodium package is just before i showed a laptop rams that is small outline dual inline memory module okay so rim packages is used for laptop and mini pcs are there sim packages dip packages nowadays people are not using maybe dip type only for iot purpose in generally we are not using for computer we are not using we are using dim or rim packages or sodium for a laptops what is the difference is the pin configuration is different more of it so don't worry about it you already about a, i told about static ram static ram is a much faster than a dram and costlier actually it is built inside your processor for internal cache kind of stuff l1 l2 l3 caches are there so what is this cache memory will do it guys i showed a starting one block diagram is there now so cpu memory input and output the originally it is look like this one your input output devices memory devices okay so all other devices all devices all other devices except uh, processor and ram is connected to a io controller so through io controller only they will uh, transfer the data in uh, in and out both means input device is giving it data to the io controller output data output device means your monitor get a uh, information from io controller of course io controller to vga vga to <coughs> our monitor okay your mouse is mouse information hard disk or cd ram okay so your uh, power leds everything usb is network connections network cards so what are the data what are the connection you are making that all information go to go, go through io controller only so io controller knows which device it is what type of device where it is located okay so it will give that proper information to the ram it load information to your ram ram load that information information means instruction and data to your cpu cpu process it and give the in outcome to the ram and ram to io controller io controller to your io devices okay so earlier diagram input to the cpu process output on a output devices okay it get give the output to output devices originally all devices are controlled by all input output devices are controlled by not only input output your memory devices like a okay your graphic cards or anything anything you have like a hard disk or cd ram all are passes through your io controller only okay so io controller only give or take data from uh, the data to the ram only so okay so io controller load the data to ram ram to cpu cpu to ram ram to io controller io controller to your devices okay this cache memory is intermediate between your cpu and ram because cpu is a faster ram is little slower than a cpu so mismatching speeds 
So what is this cache will do? Cache load the data from RAM and give it a CPU. So it will like like that. It will match the speeds and uh, make the processing faster and easier. OK, that's why it is called as a cache. Usually I will tell one example, uh, but that example we can tell or not. Uh, I will tell one example if you understand good, not understand. OK, you know. Um, cricket. Everybody knows cricket. OK, nowadays the cricket popularity little lesser. OK, because a uh, lot of programs and all we came. OK, so then. Uh, um, lesser celebration about it, but still same thing is there. But now it is more passion, not uh, uh, fashion, not passion, fashion in a cricket. OK, so earlier days we uh, we don't know anything, so only cricket. Of course, I don't play cricket. I don't know how to play cricket. I'm not uh, much uh, playing sports person. OK, so not only cricket, nothing, no sports. I don't get it, but um, as my world experience have said, the so batsman is there. Okay, he hit the ball. Okay, baller ball. He hit the ball. Ball went to some place. Someone in the field got the ball. Okay, so this guy is running towards here. It is uh, it is a little far from this one. He got the ball. He tried to throw the ball to the wickets, right? But really, he, he don't throw the ball. He don't try to throw the ball to the wickets. OK, what he will do He throw the ball towards the wicket and the nearest person to the wickets, the person who is near to this wickets, he'll take the ball and try to hit it. So it is like a ram. Catchy. And it's a main process like heating. Okay, it's not we, we cannot compare that one, but the catchy importance. It means the catchy will take the data and give it to the CPU. Okay, like that. So so see whenever you start your computer, means when CPU try to get the data, it will ask catchy. It will take the data from catchy. Catchy load the data from RAM. RAM take the information from your rest of the devices okay, I, through iowa controller in generally of course rom also will give you data rom also not giving data to cp so everything should be loaded through ram only everything should be loaded to your ram only okay that's why always cpu ram are nearby in generally in generally i will remove this boxes later so this CPU to RAM communication is controlled by North Bridge. OK. North Bridge. Now it is not there. Now Bridge South Bridge are remote. They put a only one chip. The communication between RAM and CPU will be controlled by North Bridge. The communication between your uh, IO controllers, devices, and RAM. So that will be controlled by South Bridge. Controlled by South Bridge. Uh, I will keep it like this. So, what is the North Bridge and South Bridge? Both are chips only on your motherboard. So North Bridge will take care of communication between CPU and RAM. So how the communication and all going on, it will be take care of that one. You may maintain the communication between CPU and RAM. South Bridge is maintain the communication between RAM, IO controllers, and your other devices is controlling. Okay. So North Bridge and South Bridge. So now if you see latest motherboards, you don't find any North Bridge and South Bridge. Only one chip only will find OK, so they are integrated north and south integrated into one single north bridge only. So the rest of communication, entire communication will take care by single pass. This catches also labels are there L1, L2, L3 catches are there. Like a L1, 
this is a CPU. The first layer CPU nearest one is L1 catch. Then L2 catch. Then L3 catch. OK, so program will be loaded to L2 L3, then L2, L1 and CPU. CPU to L1, L2, then L3 and RAM. OK, so this is what this like that kind of layers are there. Guys, this is about your. Uh, not completed. Uh, yeah, completed. OK, a RAM slots and all I shown. Let's see. A RAM related volumes. RAM related volumes also we can discuss. OK, so if, if we got any other chance also we can divide uh, these things into separately. RAM related volumes. RAM is a main memory and RAM is a primary memory. RAM sits in a RAM slot. RAM, you put it in a RAM slot. OK, sometimes. You may not put it properly. Sometimes you may not put it properly. Some gap is created. Or maybe your RAM is failed. RAM is not working. Or you didn't put a RAM properly. OK, RAM loose connection. RAM loose connection. Mm, dust. Dust. And again, this RAM slot or RAM contacts on RAM slots are the RAM contacts. Like you see the RAM. So you, you may have seen that uh, RAM uh, related uh, uh, side contacts are there, no connectivity. This is also having a lot of dust inside. That is also having a lot of dust inside. So it will be dust formation is here. OK, dust can be here or dust can be here. OK, because of that one improper contact. So I told first RAM is not working. Second one is RAM not inserted properly. Not inserted properly or not at all inserted. RAM loose connection. RAM loose connection. RAM slot dust, dust in the RAM slots. Dust on the RAM. RAM connections. I will show you that one how it is uh, look like. Uh, why this is this is blocking my uh, browser access. Yeah, I will back to this tape. OK. Dust on RAM. it is the contacts will get a dust formation on it so ram should be these connect contacts should be clear but because of this tiny uh, particles form on the thing so then what it will do so you have to clean up these ram tracks okay so mostly people use <laughs> they are showing ideals okay this is RAM contacts, RAM slots having a dust means you can use this uh, air blower. Don't use automatic air blower, guys. Sort of people, it is very easy to clean up using a, a electrical uh, blower, air blower. It is better is always need a patience to use a hand blower. OK, so clean the RAM contacts. Use and uh, uh, anti electrostatic uh, brushes kind of stuff is always best. Clean it properly. OK, and then um, I showed one RAM uh, with the eraser. Where is that as eraser? Yeah, here it is eraser. OK. So clean this with a eraser because it's not a electrostatic day part. OK, insert properly. Plug properly. There is a contact plugs are there, you know, sides. OK, make sure it is inserting properly. Then uh, it should be locked properly. OK, so that is a basic troubleshooting. In case of this is happening, but how do you know it is a dust formation or RAM slot is uh, damage and loose connection and all. We don't know, right? 
this is the maintenance troubleshooting and maintenance but if you don't if you got if your ram is not working or not sitting or not connected what kind of error you will get it so here it is the ram failed means yes. not working lose connection not connected not connected dust okay so actually how do you you got some problem right so what is the problem you will get it by uh, post failure the, the the part is comes hmm? under post failure hmm don't slip in a boot processing yeah, someone is talking by open mic akhil okay he okay, is close the mic now on post failure due to the ram related issues okay so what is post failure and all i will tell in the boot processing so tomorrow we'll see the boot processing part okay i'm not uh, taking class fast okay today so very slowly i'm going i think people are asleep okay so post failure or boot failure so ram problem you will get at starting only in generally so post failure means your booting is failure it is also a boot failure so what will happen we'll see what if post failure what will happen you have a screen right you have a computer screen so this is your your cabinet it means your computer your monitor you have a keyboard and of course you have a mouse okay so when you power on your system you press the power button so post will be launched power on self test be there it will check uh, the components like a cpu motherboard uh, uh, your ram your bios uh, everything will be checked all the chipsets on your computer will be checked whether it is working or not working for example ram not working or ram loose connection ram not dash got a dash so it is it is tell like a ram problem so system will tell your process your system understand system understand it is a ram problem so how it will tell it is generate beep sound beep sound continuous beep if it is successful it is single beep if not successful like a continuous beep ram failures continuous beep so beep okay continuous beeps or no beeps at all okay if you why no beeps that is one reason is there because you don't have a speaker or a buzzer beeping sound uh, that kind of stuff you didn't attach okay beep sound uh, related uh, you know in alarm we have a you know beep the uh, small uh, speaker is there okay so that is generate a beep no beep or continuous beep so if speaker is not there no beeps speaker is there it means continuous beep not your audio speakers built in speaker is there on motherboard speaker is there okay so continuous beeps this is one okay so indication one if no beeps so we don't know what happened so we can understand the post failure here on your uh, screen on your screen not at all nothing is display not even a no signal for example your monitor is data cable is disconnected monitor cable is disconnected what you see on the screen no signal okay if you don't connect a cable like if you have a tv also like you have a hdmi you put a hdmi uh, uh, connection but you didn't connect anything to your hdmi or usb but it will show no signal not connected no signal kind of stuff in this case you don't see no signal 
no nothing about your uh, any system keyboard or anything nothing on it it is a completely blank screen it is completely a blank screen like this complete blank screen no, i don't go for for it so i will take complete blank screen nothing okay so if you see that one first assumption is yes first failure first is first failure and one more indication you have a keyboard the keyboard having a three leds the post is successful it blink once once at least once it is blink and stop no blinking no blinking no led blinking third one on system you have a two leds that's why i told uh, first only the components here okay so these things i told already that's why i'm telling okay first one is power led next one is hard disk led your power led is blink but hard disk led not blinking because power supply is there you got a blank screen does not mean you, the main connection is not there okay power supply is there it went to the smps smps is also working uh, smp is also working that we can understand by power led blinking hard disk led not blinking meaning is post failure okay power led not blinking power led not blinking means it is a power supply related issue either main power supply or smps or some connection or power button or power button power led is not blinking okay power led is blinking means power supply is good hard disk led is not blinking means either hard disk problem or post failure okay keyboard when you press the power button keyboard led is blinks once if it is not at all blinking no even if you press the num lock or cap lock nothing is blinking nothing no no led is glowing even you press the num lock or cap lock also nothing is blinking it is a post failure what is post failure here most possible the most possibility of post failure is ram only why ram ram is uh, we are connecting a ram into the ram slots right so while you are doing that one there is a lot of issues sometimes loose connection sometimes not fitting properly sometimes dust okay last one is failure so what you have to do it in this case remove the power connection so you where is this your power connection you have a main power supply is there no so first of all remove this power connection remove the power card open the cabinet open the cabinet slowly remove the ram first remove the ram check any dust formation if dust formation is there clean up the ram clean up the ram slots reinsert ram the properly try to turn on the computer without moving anything just try to turn on the means connect the power and try to turn on the computer if it is works good if it is not working try to check with the other ram try to check with the other ram if possible if other ram is working and your ram is not working it means it is may may maybe your ram is not working okay or maybe some there is incompatibilities are there some issue is there okay so we have to make sure that the connections then ram failure part okay you know i have seen one or two times the um, um, maximum ram issues are troubleshooting like this you know one day i went to a shop then the one guy is open seriously a computer and he is keep cleaning the ram 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 cleaning etc ram cleaning etc it is nothing working 
I found that there is some other reason. Later, I, re I got that information. That is the motherboard power supply distribution is not good. The some power supply related uh, uh, components are on the motherboard is not good. In that cases also, you may get a blank screen. You may get a blank screen, but in different way. It means CPU runs, CPU fan will be run for five minutes, like a two minutes, and it will stop automatically. But RAM failures, CPU fan will run continuously. Okay. To understand what is the problem, is it a RAM problem or CPU problem or some other problem, we can understand by using postcards. And easily insert these postcards. Sorry. Motherboard. Test purpose. These are the postcards, guys. Just they will insert these postcards into the motherboard and turn on the computer. It displays some numbers on it. So we can understand based on the numbers and the BIOS chip based on the BIOS chip and these numbers we can understand. Yeah, here it is. We can understand what exactly the problem is occurred inside your computer. You can understand what exactly problem is a RAM problem or a CPU problem or like, or like that. So the why CPU failure Sorry, why post failure when you power on the system, your RAM or CPU or components on your motherboard having some issue, column or failures occur, your post will be failure. In generally, we throw everything on a RAM only. In case of RAM, then you have to verify your RAM connectivity, cleaning and cross verify with other RAM if RAM is failed. In case of RAM is failed. OK, so if it is working good, if not working, not good. Again, we have to check another way. OK, so this is RAM related. Issue also. OK, so RAM related troubleshooting. So CPU related. Frequently restart a computer if possible. CPU is getting sorry system is restarting continuously continuous restarts are going on so frequent restarts are continuous restarts so possible cpu is getting overheated so check the cpu heatsink paste and uh, heatsink and uh, heatsink fan okay post failures like uh, you start your computer you got a blank screen no led blinking on the keyboard and uh, Hard disk LED is also not blinking. Meaning is there is a problem in said your hardware. OK, like that. So power LED is blinking means power supply is there. So we don't need to check the power supply again. Only maybe problem with the. Your hardware. It is a completely blank screen. The screen should be blank. OK, so one easily we can throw on a, your RAM related. So RAM connectivity, RAM dust, RAM loose connections, RAM properly not sitting inside okay incompatible rams incompatible ram you are using a ram failures okay of course post failure possible with your ram or a processor or maybe uh, your bios chip or maybe your other chipsets on motherboard or power supply distribution related uh, components okay so this is uh, uh, or a cpu power supply connector so these are all create like this. Uh, one more reason is there. <laughs> one more is there that is we don't go that that is a graphic memory related also there. OK, that is understandable. That is understandable. It is a graphic card like a, you know, guys, I use a one processor called. A, um, yeah, I will put here. I3 processor. 9100 F model. I purchased this model because I got a very less cost. That time it is 7000 like that. 
I got this one. Now it is at 10th uh, generation. I purchased 9th generation. This processor only I purchased it. F models. See the F model. OK, this F model do not have any graphic memory inside a processor. Nothing any basic graphic model memory also not there. That's it. They given a little co lesser cost. OK, so that's it is discrete graphics required. It is there, but I didn't see in that one properly. I purchased it. I installed everything. I purchased motherboard. I purchased uh, processor. I purchased RAM. I, I purchased SSD. Everything is installed perfectly. And no display on the screen. I'm checking BIOS is working means the no display on the screen means post failure. But keyboard LEDs are blinking. OK, hard disk LEDs are blinking. Everything is good. It is everything seems good. I don't know what happened. So that's I got like a tension. Then I went to the uh, different places and finally I found uh, see it is a discrete graphics. And also I've seen the reviews. Review. So I thought uh, means where the problem is we don't know. So we have to send everything back. That is not at all good. OK, I've seen this review. Some point some people told yeah, it does not have internal graphics. You have to use this graphic card. Again, I have to purchase 2 GB graphic card. I have to purchase a 2 GB graphic card inserted and then I got a display. <laughs> OK, but I can understand later uh, easily like uh, it is not because of my improper installation of RAM or CPU or any other components a kind of stuff. OK, I can understand why because of. These things. Keyboard LEDs. Power LEDs. OK, because of that uh, I can understand the post is not failure uh, and it is a failure of. OK, it's some other. So then I read I got it. Yeah, one more is important. Where is combinations? Yeah, any compatibility motherboard kind of stuff? OK, no problem. I'll go to this. It will show you as a motherboard. I need a motherboard, not yeah, some motherboard, any motherboard, no problem. OK. Can you see these are the motherboards guys? This is the latest motherboards. Better to go through latest motherboard. See it is. Motherboard. OK, these are the the RAM slots CPU slot. This is a uh, your uh, power connector SMPS connector and your SATA connectors. And here it is. This part this particularly empty place you can see and this one is your SSD M.2 type SSD can connect it. This is graphic card. This big one is a graphic card. This is a back panel connections. OK, audio chipset. This is I said no North bridge South bridge combination. BIOS chip and your uh, battery BIOS related battery front panel connections. OK, here it is a CPU separate power supply for this one. The supplies go for a your CPU. OK. This is a panel connection and other chipsets. OK, and uh, the corner it will show some LED display. That's why I am trying to go for it. In some corners. OK, the lines are there now. I, I think uh, I used MSC motherboard. So new motherboard it is. It contains some LED part here. What is the advantage of using that motherboard? OK, that in that motherboard uh, I understand. Uh, yeah, AS rock, AS rock, I use MSI. I'll go to another one otherwise like a gigabit. Yeah, it is very old one, old one. This is not new one. This is old one. Why it is showing old one? Yeah, any which ways guys. Uh, if you go to the. Um, not this one. The cost is increased. Yeah, this model I used. 
Okay, you know, because of this is completely pure black color, I, we can't able to see. You know, not this one. This is a new one. Uh, but you can see this is a LED part. You can hear. Okay, in this corner only, like I'm moving in this corner, like a J R A one, N B O W one. OK, in that corner only you can see some LED lights. So what is the use of that LED? Each LED represents something. One is power LED, CPU LED, RAM LED and graphic LED. So in one LED is not blinking that time. So that is also confirms that a uh, graphic memory related. When I inserted a graphic card, it is blinking. So we can easily understand in, in, you know, the technology improves. If CPU is having some problem, CPU LED, RAM is not sitting properly, RAM related LED, a graphic memory is not there in the CPU, then graphic LED, or you have to insert a graphic, your graphic card is not working, graphic card LED. So like that we can understand, so based on these uh, LEDs. Uh, it is not opening. OK, this is a back panel connection, guys. HDMI, VGA. Almost all model, but not exactly this. This is a, a 1200 model. I use 1050 model. Okay. This is for a 10th generation. OK, I use for a 9th generation. OK, but model number is like this one. What's our it is guys? Same thing. Point is. I think you understand the point is if the issue is occur, you got a blank screen and check this LED, LED and other things. Either it is a post failure. Or. OK, so and if post failure means where which component is effective, whether it is RAM or RAM, not so confirm by checking with the RAM first, then later. OK, so. This is two troubleshootings also we discuss guys. Um, little time I need a, another 15 20 minutes. I will finish at least ROM and motherboard and SMPS. The first one I will give very well less time. I spend very less time, but BIOS I will tell tomorrow like separately, but just to ROM chip wise I will tell. OK, because uh, components should be completed. Uh, then only we can discuss troubleshooting. But I instead of that one I told troubleshooting also. You see BIOS is also very important. That is I will tell separately, but I will tell some introduction to BIOS also. Guys, ROM chip is a ROM read only memory. Meaning is by manufacturer, the manufacturer manufacture the ROM chip directly, direct chip. OK, it's not empty chip. It all the chip is directly direct the chip while it is manufacturing chip. Sorry, while manufacturing the chip, they put a data inside. Data is not read and write. From other resources when manufacturer manufacture the RAMs ROM chip. They put a data inside and they build it like that only. So that's why it is a non volatile memory and mainly like a the meaning of non volatile means the, even the power is off data not loss. So ROM chip is built uh, uh, any uh, without uh, directly. Instructions inside. Information means instructions and data inside of ROM chip is directly. Put it by manufacturer of ROM chip. But later on days. The manufacturer started uh, building from chip programmable read only memories means empty chips. So what is the use of this empty chip? I'm manufacturing my motherboard. I'm manufacturing the computer motherboard. Someone like a you are a manufacturer of ROM chips. There is ROM chip manufacturer. I'm motherboard manufacturer. Different type of motherboard manufacturers came into market. What they will do it. So we don't want 
pre configured rom chips we will configure give me a free rom give me a empty rom chip we will put a data inside so then rom chip manufacturers what they done so they create a prom chips programmable read only memory chips so then using a ultraviolet rays so this rom chip having some glass on it so by passing some uh, some ultraviolet rays you know by ultraviolet rays it is a computer means electronic device you have to send a electrical signal by uv rays uv is a photon energy so using that so they program the chip okay programmable read only memory means it is a one time program type so whatever it is uv and all keep it like side rom chip fixed chip means when manufacturing rom chip already instructions and data is inside but program chip rom chip is a empty chip so whenever we required we take a empty chip we program it but it is one time once you program working good if it is not working some problem with your program throw the rom outside we cannot do it we cannot re remove it then erasable program will remember so what happen once you program it okay and uh, if you are using good if you are not using you keep aside or maybe there is some error if it is go for someone like okay, you don't want to keep the data inside a rom chip if you are not using you can erase it next one is eprom chips we are all using eprom chips electrically erasable program programmable read only memory it is a rewrite chip it means you have a chip you put a instructions and data inside now you realize you want to upgrade that one you can upgrade it you want to change it you can change it that is a prom chip this is about a rom chip and people get a doubt sir where is the rom last time one guy gave me a comment that is so i told about ram sizes then he asked a good question that is what is the size of the rom we are not changing roms frequently like a ram or a size of the ram we are not increasing that's a mostly the rom chips don't specify size of the rom chip but it is very very less like a 50k 100k 200k maximum that size only Now in a kilobytes maximum in a, a megabytes like a 1mb 2mb depends upon your uh, new models depends upon program inside it is in the very small size some are a graphical base some are not graphical base rom chips are there means graphical base means it contains a more data means it is required more size but not like a ram like a, a 1 gb 2 gb 5 gb 18 gb 16 gb that kind of stuff is not there okay very less 1 mb 2 mb may be there and uh, people will confuse between rom and bios and cmos okay guys rom chip contains a program called a bios basic output input output system in rom chip we have a program called a program means our instructions whatever it is is called a bios basic input input output system this bios is nothing but a firmware or firmware okay you can use any word firmware or a firmware and the latest firmware means after bios means the update version of your uh, uh, bios is uefi unified extensible firmware interface so bios uefi two things okay so till now we are using a bios and of course from last 4 5 years we are using uefi type of chipsets also okay so all we are getting most of the systems are 64 bit motherboards on motherboard we are having a uefi to given a compatibility so then we are getting bios and uefi and we are using uefi nowadays what is this bios are uefi air firmwares or firmwares what is the use of this firmware or firmware when you start your computer the first instruction is load from your bios only the bios 
is perform boot processing start of starting your computer boot processing like when you press the power button the boot processing will start by your bios only okay exactly say it is a different little different but uh, the bios you know your your bios information <sighs> you start your computer system got power supply system got a power supply power supply is distributed your bios is to collect information about connected devices connected devices like a cpu cpu is separate from motherboard right so we are connecting to the motherboard cpu information ram information ram slots information graphic card information hard disk information cd ram information so it will gather the information of connected devices and it also already having the information about your motherboard on motherboard devices and cpu sorry your bios is 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 while well, it's checking it checking the devices it make sure that the primary devices like a cpu ram and on mode uh, on motherboard devices working or not if any device is not working it is called a post failure or a boot processing failure okay so that's why it is post power on self test performed as bios as per certain test work or we can say easily when you power on the system system will test itself test itself whether all the components working or not uh, it is little uh, i told a little bit but it may confuse you guys very simple bios contains information about your motherboard okay and bios collect the information from the devices those connected to your motherboard and when you power on the system first it will collect the information about your cpu ram and hard disk okay and other uh, any connected devices it collect that information okay the bios will maintain the running date and time to maintain the date and time running and uh, to protect it is also contains a, a, a settings bios settings in the bios chipset enabling disabling certain features in the bios chip is there so enabling disabling of certain hardware features date and time running if anybody open this bios settings and want to change certain uh, uh, things like enabling disabling of hardware devices or hardware device features to prevent it from another is person access you can put a passwords to bios settings you can put a passwords to bios setting that password also stores in your bios chip okay guys what is your bios chip is having bios chip bios is a basic input output system uefi unified extensible frameware interface both are frameware only or firmware okay the firmware is used to start your device firmware is usually for start your device for example you switch on your mobile phone how your mobile phone know how to switch on how to load it is the instructions in the your mobile bios chipset even though you take a very small mobile means that future mobiles also having bios chips inside printer having a bios chip inside ac having a bios chip inside means when you power on what to do next how to power on how to make it running later user instructions okay so how to load things it decide it will be done by how to load things is done by your firmware only so in our computer we call it as a bios or uefi okay so it contains pre data as a motherboard related details it contains about your motherboard related details. means about cpu socket ram slots or agp slots pcs slots not the bits details software is details uh, network related details usb related details okay 
VGA uh, related details, everything will be in your BIOS. It's a fixed information. And uh, user can able to change the features of hardware and enable disable hardware devices or change the features of hardware uh, components. That is called a BIOS settings. OK, that is called a BIOS. Using BIOS settings, you can able to change it. Next, your BIOS chip, when it is power on, when system is power on, BIOS chip gather the information about CPU, RAM, hard disk and CD-ROM, all connected devices to the motherboard, it gather that information also. And BIOS chipset also runs the date and time. OK, this is about your BIOS. Uh, one part of BIOS. OK, this is about a BIOS setting guys, so you can enable disable the BIOS settings. Yeah, here it is. How to go to this BIOS settings using BIOS key. Power down your system. Better is always power down your system. Press the power button and immediately press the BIOS key. What is this BIOS key? BIOS key on your mother on your keyboard. There is a different keys are there depends upon your BIOS manufacturer. Manufacturer, the key will be there. Example, if you press the Dell button immediately after power on, you press the Dell button, you can go to BIOS settings. You press the F2 button. Or maybe F10, maybe F11, F9, F12. So this a BIOS key can be anything, including escape. In, depends upon your BIOS manufacturer. OK, so you can go inside this BIOS settings. If you want to change anything, you can change it or you can to see verify. You can do it. OK, if, if you want to prevent. Some another person will go to the BIOS setting and he can able to change something in your hardware feature or a disable enable of some hardware. So what you can able to do it, you can put a password for that one. User password, supervisory password. Date and time, these BIOS passwords settings stores in your uh, BIOS chip temporarily, temporary. Permanent data is there, temporary data is also there. When you power down the system, means you power off the system, you turn off the system, temporary data always deleted. So what happened? You configured everything, every setting is there and you configured setting, date and time, you given a passwords. And today work is completed night. You shut down your computer tomorrow morning. You open your computer. Your settings go to the factory default part. Means your date and time go to the factory default date and time. Settings will be restored as a factory default. What are the settings you change? That will be restored. Passwords will be removed automatically. You're given a password that is stored in your temporary in the BIOS shape. It is also gone. To protect these data, date and time, password, settings, to keep it alive, we use a battery that is a lithium battery. Three volts lithium battery we are using. So this battery given a continuous power supply to your BIOS chip. Even though you shut down your computer, the BIOS chip is getting a power from the battery. From the this battery, this is made up of lithium. This battery also we can call it as a CMOS battery or BIOS battery. OK, but remember guys, this battery not made up of CMOS technology, not made up of CMOS technology. CMOS technology is a transistor technology used for a chips, not for a battery. Chips. OK, like your computer chips, CPU, RAM, BIOS, all are manufactured with a CMOS technology only. Complementary metal oxide semiconductor is used to store a data. Semi, sorry, complementary metal oxide semiconductor field effect to transistor. It is a MOSFET. MOSFET means metal oxide semiconductor field effect to transistor. Two type of MOSFETs are there, NMOS and CMOS. So combination of NMOS and CMOS is become NMOS and PMOS become CMOS. NMOS, PMOS, 
become CMOS, complementary metal oxide semiconductor use. These transistors we use inside here, we use to build uh, your CPU, RAM, BIOS, chipsets and all. Okay, so they need a power supply to keep the continuous data like a date and time, passwords and settings, configuration of your BIOS. User battery. Okay, guys. Um, uh, it's a basic about BIOS, but I didn't tell you about a BIOS settings completely, but at least you can go to the BIOS setting using a BIOS key. Why we should go to the BIOS setting to know your computer details, know, uh, know about uh, hardware components, enabling, disabling hardware uh, features. OK, so you know in some colleges and institute, uh, you, people will connect uh, their pen drive. They connect a pen drive to load some data from there uh, to cheat the examinations like a computer practical examinations. What will happen? You connect a, a pen drive, so automatically it's not detecting because in BIOS USB is dis disabled. Someone is disabled. OK, guys, this uh, main part of your BIOS, but something I left this one. This is uh, telling about a boot processing. In short, boot processing means when you power on your system, when you power on your system, the system try to test itself, all components, all main components working or not. That process we call it as a post power on self test. If post is successful, we go to the next step. Post failure means we go to troubleshooting. BIOS perform post operations. So once post is successful, so it will ask like this. If you go to the BIOS setting, see the boot priority. In this one, in this example, boot priority is CD-ROM. First, your BIOS try to locate MBR records from CD-ROM. Next, removal devices like a pen drive. Next is hard disk. OK, so then that MBR record that records the device records will tell about where is bootloader where is bootloader in a case of windows 7 windows 8 and windows 10 it is a boot mgr okay mbr records tell where is the bootloader and we'll take the bootloader and load the RAM, bootloader into your ram the ram tells where sorry the bootloader tells where is operating system how to load operating system will tell by your bootloader only. OK, once OS is loaded, you will get a login screen and once you will get a login, so it is startup services and applications we can able to run. So it will be run and we can able to use your computer. Guys, you power on the system. First one is post. First step is post. You power on the system. The first step is post power on self test. It will test your system whether all main components working or not, like a CPU, RAM kind of stuff working or not. Okay. Next one is your BIOS will tell. So what is the boot menu, boot options? Okay. Boot order, boot priority. Anybody can use it. Boot priority is the exact word, but boot order also you can tell. So it, it verifies. For an operating system in each and every device one by one. If it is found once, then it is try to load the operating system. For example, first it will try in a CD ROM as per this list, then USB drives like a removal devices, then hard drive, then network boot from the Intel like that. So you try to get a operating system from the devices or through network but in an order. OK, once it is find a operating system in a device based on the order, it will try to. Load boot MGR means bootloader first bootloader will tell how to load the operating system. Will tell once operating system is loaded, you will get a login screen login. So then you can start your computer. So this is a boot processing. OK, so please compulsory read the boot processing guys. 
because of lot of troubles issues in the wood processing okay yeah only motherboard and smps is left main out, out of main components motherboard and smps hard disk drives and all it is there so we'll try to see i will show you tomorrow your hard uh, remaining component motherboard and other things okay and if possible i will try to explain this broad processing also if you want you can read it because it's not a just a boot processing i told boot processing but i told a troubleshooting in the post time only okay but this is the boot processing with the troubleshooting each step with the troubleshooting what are the issues you can able to find in this butler points okay so anyway that's it we discuss about cpu ram rom bios bios read okay that's it for today guys i hope you like it or getting sleep anything no problem study well and sir, already i showed the questions yeah tell me tell me sir uh, can you please add uh, this rom troubleshooting uh, slides if you if you found anything because there is no uh, materials materialistic slides in that you just explained the troubleshooting right 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 so the ram related uh, <clears throat> material notes i didn't have in this one and uh, rom related is there rom is like a explanation like bios post related explanation yes post uh, means boot processing at the time of boot processing the what is the how boot processing that is notes is there here first of all this is a one slide notes is about yes. a boot processing okay and the last also i didn't explain it but the last is also having boot processing in this one for every step i explained one by one like i said no blank screen if you got a blank screen what is the problem where is the possible problem if you got like this boot mgr missing or boot device is not found what are the possible issues okay. <clears throat> yeah. so also this these two slides three slides are important you can understand and of course there is a few more things to discuss ram uh, related uh, uh, also ram checking ram checking is here cpu or heating is not there again cpu or heating is there yes it is there it is there sorry okay check once all pptis and uh, read it uh, we'll see okay guys